What up, y'all? So we all know money is a super powerful thing. You know, um, some would say it's more powerful than it should be or it matters more than it should. Money is nothing besides a value exchange. At the, every, at the end of every month, you're getting billed for living where you live because they provided you 30 days worth of value, you having a place to live, and that has a price tag. So in exchange for the value that they're giving you, you having your apartment, your house, whatever, they get compensated for it. So it's a value exchange, you know? Um, a lot of people, we, we, we enjoy the benefits of the value we, we're receiving, but we hate um, paying for these values, you know, electricity, uh, cable, internet. Look, we love internet. Like we love Netflix. We love cable. We love having a place to live. We hate having to pay for it. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, imagine if you paid your bills with great joy. <laughs> imagine if you, uh, you know, you sent the check and you're like, you know, with, with a great amount of joy, I send you this $400 check for my, you know, whatever it is, that whatever bill you have, you know? Um, anyways, um, people make a lot of money by bringing a lot of value to the marketplace. Now, there's a lot of people that are famous that you think have no business being famous because it's like, why the hell would anybody like that person? But you're only thinking from your perspective, you know what I mean? Like, some of you might have heard of, um, you might have heard of Lil Tay, Wo Vicky, the Cash Me Outside girl, right? Millions of fans, you know? Some some of these people, like Lil Tay, she's supposedly like nine years old, has like two million followers. And she's always like, she's always like, um, man, I'm only nine years old and I'm flexing on your mama's rent. I mean, I got your mama's rent in my hand and you can't afford this. And, you know, so she's basically, she's famous for being, you know, acting ignorant on the internet. Now, and millions of people followed her over that, like, because of that, you know, so I don't know who her manager is, but her marketing plan was basically, I'm going to get on a lot of people's nerves. I'm going to get a lot of haters, but a lot of people are going to follow me. And through her followers, through her having 2 million followers, <clears throat> she potentially has opportunity to sponsorship deals. You know what I mean? People are going to want to say, Hey, can you promote my product on your page? Um, for 24 hours, we'll pay you $30,000. You know what I mean? Because of all the attention that she's garnered and through that attention, people notice it and they view her as being a person that they could possibly put their product on her platform. And out of two million followers that she has, when she posts her advertisement for other companies, a percentage of those two million followers might convert into sales for the company. And that's why the company is glad to give $30,000, somewhere between 5,000 to maybe even 50,000. It, it depends on how many followers you have on Instagram. So isn't it crazy that once you have a lot of people subscribe to you, <clears throat> you can monetize that in more ways than you think, you know, people think that the only way to get paid is through views on YouTube, you know, but the only way to get paid really is just bringing value to the marketplace. Now, some people get paid $7 and 50 cents, $8 or whatever, and they criticize how much to get paid. But what they don't understand is to the marketplace, to that marketplace, you're only worth $8.50 to the marketplace. I have to make that distinction. Of course, you're worth more than that to your own mother, to God himself and to your community, maybe. But to that marketplace, you're doing a job that practically anybody could get hired for. You know what I mean? Anybody off the street, which depreciates the value of that position when it becomes a position that anybody could take up. You know what I mean? That's why... The college degree was held to such a high standard for so long because you needed to be educated to do certain jobs. You needed four years of learning outside of high school, you know, eight years, 12 years in some cases, 10 years, you know, um, to really master what it is that you have to. Because not everybody could do that one job. Not everybody could be a doctor. I mean, they can if they go to school, but it's a specialty and people pay more when you specialize in something, you know, and doctors that specialize in something and they're, they're more than just a general doctor are going to get paid more than general doctors. Because if you're like a bone doctor or a foot doctor or, you know what I mean, like, or a doctor for like neurology or, you know, like, so, you know, different specialties are going to get paid certain amounts. So <clears throat> you might be wondering like, yo, how can I bring more value to the marketplace? Your perceived value has to go up. I want to tell you a story about a guy who was a motivational speaker. He was a $10,000 speaker. And his website design looked so damn good, right? 
the suits that he wears, the events that he throws, well, not the event that he throws, that rather the events that he gets invited to speak at. It looks so magnificent, right? That people just didn't, there was people that wanted to call him and they was hesitant to call him because they only have a budget of like 15,000 or something like that. You know, they only had like the budget that he already accepts. He's already a $10,000 speaker, but they almost didn't make the phone call because he looks like a $100,000 speaker and they didn't think that they'd be able to afford this guy based on his presentation, based on the suits that he wears, his image, the way he portrays himself, his website design, based on all these, <clears throat> basically based on first, first time impression. You know what I mean? Their first time impression of him is, wow, he looks like a hundred thousand dollar speaker. We won't be able to afford inviting this guy to our event. So they almost didn't call him or email him for his con or, you know, to, to ask him, Hey, would he be willing to speak at their event? They ended up calling him and found out he was just a $10,000 speaker. He wasn't a hundred thousand dollar speaker, but his perceived value looks like he's a hundred thousand dollar speaker. You know what I mean? So that's why a lot of people, you know, they do the fake it till you make it thing, right? Because in a lot of these affiliate marketing programs, no one, uh, typically people don't want to join you if you haven't made a single sale, because if you haven't made any, sale, any, any sales, it doesn't give people incentive to believe in themselves and believe in what's possible for themselves. And you might say to yourself, well, those two things should be separated. Like, just because I made no sales, what does that say for you? Like, I might make nothing, but you might get in this business and make a killing. But people believe what's possible for them through what's possible for other people. That's why a lot of people that don't have dreams, they probably hang around a bunch of people that don't have dreams. And if you if you have a sort of an entrepreneurial mindset hanging around people that don't have that mindset, they're going to suck the life out of your dreams because they don't believe in a possibility for themselves. You know what I mean? So that's why a lot of people, it almost becomes necessary to change your circle your immediate circle of people you hang out with and hang out with the people that you want to become. Not that you want to be them, but people that have the results that you have, that you want to have. And if you can't physically hang out with these people, there's so many people on YouTube, Instagram that, you know, you could find people to model after, you know what I mean? Um, because trust me when I tell you, yo, like if someone, if the person talking to you about, if the person talking to you about money, makes ten thousand dollars a year you might not want to listen to that person considering your aspirations are two hundred thousand dollars a month or maybe it's not that exaggerated maybe you're asked maybe you'd be excited as hell if you could make one hundred thousand dollars in a whole year you know what i mean like you would be thrilled if that was your reality so you know what i mean um so that's why personally like when i look at mentors i look at people that are like ridiculously paid you know i look at people that have a couple million, a couple hundred thousand. You could always learn from anybody, but any anybody that has more than I have is qualified in my mind to tell me about how to get there. You know what I mean? Because they're like living that life. Like you don't want to have a person talk to you about happiness and you know, they complain every day of their life. They're always miserable. You know what I mean? Like every time you turn around, they're complaining about something, you know? And then it's like, Cause you, you know, you'll be hesitant to take their advice. Cause you'll be like, man, if I listen to you, I'll be just as miserable as you are, man. I don't want to follow anything that you do. Look at your marriage. You look at your relationship with your kids. Look at your mentality. Look at how much you complain. Like you almost don't even want to be around that because that energy might get into you and they might morph you into them. Like, you know what I mean? Like just by being around like you, cause you know, when you hang around certain people, you pick up their slang words, the way they speak. Um, just a lot of things you will pick up around people. Anyways, so in terms of bringing value to the marketplace, like Lil Tay, if you look at, I don't know if you heard of that person, if you look her up on Google, <clears throat> first impression, you might get pissed off. I don't know what your, you know, what it is that upsets you, but <clears throat> she's perceivably, a, you know, a nine-year-old girl who is arrogant. She gets on camera and she says, I have your mother's rent in my hand. She says stuff like, man, my wrist. I dropped ten thousand dollars on this on on this watch. You know what I mean? Like this costs that much, and she's like, "Man, you could do it too." And she's like, "You know." So a lot of people are going to see this person, and they're going to be like, "What value does this per person bring to the marketplace?" Or you might not even articulate it like that. You might be like, "This person brings no value according to your subjective opinion," and you think just because you think they shouldn't be famous, therefore it should be like you know how many people are mad at um, <clears throat> what's this girl name? 
uh, the, you know, the Catch Me Outside, How About That Girl, the girl from uh, Dr. Phil. People are angry that she's successful. And it says something about where they're at mentally, spiritually, emotionally, financially. You know what I mean? If you even have the time to get mad at somebody else's success, you're probably not where you could be. You know what I mean? And the more you dwell on how someone's successful and you're not, the more time is taken away. <clears throat> the more time is taken away from you being successful. You know what I mean? So um, there's a lot of books. I want you to know whatever subject you struggle with, right? Um, some practical advice. There's, you know, I want to tell you a story about a man who got divorced. And I think it was probably like a year later. There was a book inside his library that could have saved his marriage. The book was titled How to Properly Live with Another Person. He's like, damn, if only I read that a year ago before I was divorced. You know what I mean? So, you, you know, like if you have a library, there might be books on the subject. There might be it might be things right in front of you that give you detailed information on how to get the results you want to have. Everything that you struggle with in life, you know, where whether it be mental health, you can't handle mean comments like how do I have peace? How do I get inner peace? Like. <clears throat> whatever it might be that you lack, you know, how do I change my finances? There's a book dedicated to the subject. There's a podcast dedicated to it. And there's videos made on the subject. So I don't know what type of learner you are. Maybe you're more visual than you are audio. Maybe you're more audio than you are hands on. You know what I mean? And maybe people just need to watch a video with audio. And when they watch enough videos, they'll have an understanding and they learn that way. So <clears throat> you got to figure out what type of learner you are. And then find as much information as you can on the subject, because you see, it's not enough to do to read about six pack abs and you could want you could want six pack abs all you want. You know what I mean? If you want a six pack, you need to do some damn sit ups. You need to get your ass in the weight room. You know what I mean? It's not enough to want money. You have to study. You have to make it a study. Everything that you want, turn it into a study. You want happiness, study happiness. You want financial freedom, study financial freedom. Treat it like it's a course in school without someone lecturing you, right? Or standing over you. Take your laptop or your phone out. Watch a lot of content and everything that you learn that you think is valuable, write it down, right? And whatever amount of money you want to make, regardless of how ridiculous the number is, type it in on YouTube. Let's say you want to make $500 a day. Type exactly what you want in the search bar, how to make $500 a day, $400, $300. Some of you would be happy if you made $100 a day. Whatever the number is, how regardless of how ridiculous it is, type that number in and watch 15 videos on that number. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's going to take for you to become more than you are to get more of what you want because everything that you want it's outside of your reach because you are a person that's not qualified to get it in your current state. That doesn't mean you can't revolutionize the way you think and become the person that, that's necessary to achieve the things you want. It just means you might currently have a mindset that restricts you from getting things. Let me give you an example. <clears throat> Lots of people are pessimistic. And I don't know what the hell is the value in that. You know what I mean? I don't know what value they think it brings them. Maybe if they think if they're pessimistic, nobody's going to be able to scam them and steal their money. But when you're pessimistic towards everything, you're denying yourself of what possibly could be an opportunity because skepticism, skepticism doesn't win any wars. You know, optimism always wins. <clears throat> but you might be like, well, if I be optimistic, I'm going to get burned. I'm going to get burned and people are going to do this and they're going to take advantage. There's always going to be people that take advantage. There's always, look, if you become an ostrich and you, you stick your fucking head in the sand all your life, sh like, sure, like, you know, you can live that way, but damn, what a life to live, like, with your head in the sand the whole entire time that you're living life, like, never got your eyes open, looking at opportunity and what's possible for you. And you got to understand one, one other principle before I start talking about, like, more practical stuff. The more cynical you are towards what's possible for other people, you're applying the same cynicism to yourself. When you see people on Facebook, <clears throat> YouTube, and they have $10,000 cash in their hand and they're doing their video advertisement and another man advertising their opportunity pisses you off, it says a lot about you that you have a lot of idle time to get mad at other people and what they're doing. You know what I mean? Because your intuition, you know, or your rather your assumption is telling you that this person must be scamming people. And that's the only way to get a lot of money is to scam a lot of people. 
Well, that's not what Bill Gates did. He created a product that many people wanted. Windows, PC, or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, Steve Jobs, the iPhone. He didn't scam a lot of people. Now, you might say that a fucking phone that costs $1,000, that's a scam. You know? But people are lining up willingly. They can't. They have the release date of the iPhones memorized. And they line up just to hand off their money for a product that they believe in. How is it a scam if people are, you know what I'm saying? Like, if people are lining up to pay their money for it and in exchange for the value, because like I said, money is a value exchange. So in exchange for $1,000, you get an, a nice phone, you know, so would, some would argue an overly priced phone, but whatever, you could label it what you want. But many people consider something valuable and you have to understand just because many people consider it valuable and you don't doesn't doesn't depreciate the value just because you don't think it's valuable you know what i'm saying like <clears throat> some people might argue man why the hell do so many people like michael jackson's music like it's corny to me you know what i mean but a lot of the world appreciated his value they appreciated his music you know what i mean it's the reason that he could sell out venues in a day in less than a day you know what i mean like it's the reason that you know he could price himself according to the, the value the perceived value from the marketplace. The marketplace is this whole entire planet as a whole. You know what I mean? Um, I've had other podcasts where I talk about insecure artists. This is why if you do music, it's not a good idea for you to get insecure about five people don't like your artwork. Five people, uh, 15 people didn't like your song. And you're going to base your opinion on a focus group of 15 and say that nobody's going to like my music. as if, at, Almost as if 15 people equal the whole damn world. What does 15 people have to do with 7 billion people? 15 people that dislike your work, they're not the entire marketplace. You know what I mean? So before you say that no one's going to like your stuff, you have to get your stuff in front of more people. You know what I mean? So whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're you know affiliate marketer, um, you, whether you're a sales agent, you're recruiting, don't get discouraged when some people say no. Life is a numbers game, right? A percentage of people are going to go to heaven when they die. A percentage of people are going to go to hell when they die, right? A percentage of people are going to be massively successful. A percentage of people never will be. A percentage of people are pleasant to be around. A percentage of people are not. The numbers don't change. Only the faces change. You might look at human behavior and say, what could possess a man to act that way? And you might not even realize there's millions of people acting in a disgusting manner. Well, in a manner that's disgusting to you. You know what I mean? And um, life is just a numbers game, you know? Um, but saying that it doesn't mean that you can't change what side of the fence you're on you might think because you were born into poverty that you're destined to continue being that way that's not true because at least 90 percent of people that have a ridiculous amount of money they came from obscurity they came from nothing you know what i mean like they they had barely two nickels to rub together like i saw this one picture about the startup of ups which is now either a hundred million or a hundred billion. I don't know. It was a ridiculous number. I don't know what their, what their net worth is UPS, but, um, they've brought a lot of value to the marketplace delivering packages. And they started with $100. You know what I mean? People came from obscure. They started with $100 and they rented a van or something like that. So if you think that you don't have what's necessary to get to what you want, the best resource Excuse me. The best resource is being resourceful. If you're resourceful, you can resourceful people know how to make something out of nothing. You know what I mean? Like that's what I learned in art class from from arts and crafts. Like they take obscure things and turn it into artwork, things that don't look like they should be put together to make art, but they make art out of it anyways. It's the same principles applied to making a lot of wealth. Let me tell you about some success stories, you know, um I heard, a, you know, I know a story of a guy who he stood in front of a car that's not his and made a video as if it was his car. And he hit the, the beep beep so sound on his keychain, right? He pressed the button on his keychain and he was like, this is what success buys you a nice car. It wasn't his car. Um, The sound effect that was coming from what what seemed to be his car, it came from his car in the background. His car was parked like maybe one or two vehicles behind that car, you know? So it made it seem like that was his car. But off the strength of that video, he made his first sale and started making a lot of sales. So even though his success started from a lie, you know what I mean? He's still successful now. And I'm not promoting lying to get to where you have to get, you know, but what I'm saying is like that determination that he had, he said, yo, I have $1 in my bank account. 
he felt like he had to lie. That's why he did it. You know what I mean? He felt like this is what I have to do to get what I want. You know what I mean? And I'm not advocating for that. But what I'm saying is when you're that damn desperate, nothing stands in your way. You know what I mean? When you're willing to do whatever. Now, hopefully people don't develop an attitude where they're willing to uh, get the best out of people and manipulate people's behavior into buying something that you know is crap and you know doesn't bring any value. You know, like mom, you know, uh, I know a person who got scammed out of $3,000. It was a consolidation thing, you know, and it was fake as hell. Like they didn't do any work and they just took the money, you know? So it sucks that people like that exist, but life is a numbers game. You know, people are, so a percentage of people are going to be scammers. When I started caring about network marketing and making a ton of money online, um, it was 2014 and I saw a guy named Darren Fryer. He was 22 years old talking about, I have 20,000, I make $20,000 a month, $30,000 a month. I never once, not even for a, a second, not even, not even for a moment did I say, there's no way that's possible. You must be lying. I need to see proof. I didn't get cynical about it. I just instantly believed it that more than I believed his story being authentic. I believed in that possibility for myself. So my belief transcended beyond, is he a liar or is he not? <clears throat> is he, is his Lamborghini rented or is it not? Is this hotel rented or, you know what I mean? Or does he, this house rented? Does he actually live there? You know what I mean? Like, are these people in his video paid actors? Did he pay them to say this? Like, I didn't think any, of, I don't even know how to think like that. I only know how to think when I see things, do I want it? Yes or no? That's it. I don't care if someone's lying to make a living you know that has nothing to do with me you know what i mean and I, I don't even think it's my place to have an emotional response to that a negative emotional response to people shouldn't advertise this way and they shouldn't do this because what i think shouldn't happen continues to exist with or without my permission you know what i mean like a lot of people don't believe in god because of the concept of hell and they think what type of loving god would send people to burn etern eternally right but if hell is real, right, and if it is eternal, what you need to understand is it exists with or without your approval, with or without your permission. So there might be famous people that you think shouldn't be famous. It won't make them any less famous just because you think that they shouldn't. And a lot of people who can't control their emotions respond to videos that aren't worth their time consuming. And they'll put comments, man, this guy's a bozo. This guy shouldn't, you know what I mean? Feeding, feeding the trolls, you know what I mean? Like Lil Tay literally got famous off of people who are incapable of controlling their emotions. Not that they're incapable, that's a bad word. At the moment, they're incapable because they don't know how, because they impulsively react to everything that's not worth their time reacting to. And all the time they spend reacting to life, they never spend any time living life, you know? All the time they spend escaping from life. They spend zero time trying to create the life that they don't have to escape from. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, so how do you bring more value to the marketplace? You have to become more valuable. So what does that mean? Some people do it by getting degrees, by getting certificates. That's one way, you know. Uh, I know that the degree model is fading and the degree is not worth half as much as it was <clears throat> 35 years ago. You know, it used to mean a lot that you came from Yale and you came from Harvard. I mean, it still means a lot now because like the, the brand of the school is so high. And that's why the school doesn't take anybody. That's why not anybody could go to Harvard. You have to have certain grades. They don't accept because you have to have you have to be a certain standard of person. You have to be a certain type of person to get into Harvard, to get into Yale. And that's why you have to qualify to get there. You know, you have to be a certain type of person to physically have the body that you want to have. You know what I mean? Like you're not qualified to have six pack abs and you're not willing to do any pushups. You're not willing to go in the weight room. You're not willing to, you know, so a lot of people, they want wealth, but they're not willing to climb the mountain. They just want to teleport there and they wish they could teleport and they hate the process of climbing. And that's why they never take the climb because they just want things without planting any seeds. You know what I'm saying? The moment you plant seeds, then you'll be qualified to get what you want. Once you start doing what makes you qualified, you know, many people want a lot of things, but, but to get what you want, you must first deserve what you want. And many people don't deserve what they want because they just want it without being willing to do anything for it. You know what I'm saying? So becoming more valuable, I believe, I believe, um, people, I believe everyone has a talent, whether they know it or not. Some people are 55 years old and still don't know what the hell they're doing on this earth or what they could be talented at, you know, 
because we just run through the routines of life, you know. Um, you might be incredibly talented at speaking, at <clears throat> at doing, at writing articles, at you know. Um, but you might be wondering, how the hell do I monetize this? You know. So you got to just get yourself in front of people. It's almost like asking, how do I ha how do I get a job? You apply for one. You know what I'm saying? You fill out, a, you do your resume. And then you, you send it to a lot of locations. Um, hopefully somebody who's interested in you calls you, you know? And so that's how you, you know, apply for a job. But, you know, it's, it's crazy. To, like, there's a disconnect between being massively successful and applying for a job. You know what I mean? Like, almost no one has to tell you that, obviously, you apply for a job. Otherwise, you won't get one. Who's going to know that you want a job unless you fill out a resume? Unless you do your resume and you submit it. Like, no one's going to know that you're interested in that position, you know? And the purpose of the resume, they want to see how qualified you are. Well, similarly to like, let's say you want to make a million dollars, right? And here's something I learned. Here's what all the rich people have in common. They're bringing value. A lot of Not only are they bringing a lot of value to the marketplace, they're serving a great multitude of people. You know, um, Steve Jobs, his the iPhone, he sold it to 1 billion units. 1 billion units of the iPhone has been sold. So that's a lot of people. I learned that there's nothing to gain without servitude. Um, you have to serve a lot of people to get a lot back. You know, you have to love a lot of people to get a lot of love back. You know what I'm saying? So there's a scripture in the Bible that says, you know, God saying something along the lines of you love me because I loved you first or something like you can't love me first, you know, without me loving you first. So through God loving people, people eventually love him back. You know what I mean? Um, but it would be different if God did nothing that, you know, deserved your love. You know, if he was just sitting in heaven expecting your love. So there's a lot of people on earth just expecting to be, whether it be famous, whether it be money. And we have skewed visions on money, right? Let, let me talk about some of the things that's going to keep people broke indefinitely until they die forever. Never going to have money. Because their thought process about money, first of all, they think it's evil for them to want a lot of money, right? And people just don't want millions of dollars. Well, they don't know what they want to do with millions of dollars, right? So that becomes the reason that they don't want it. Um, the amount of money that I want is whatever money I'm capable of producing, that's the amount I want. So I don't know if I'm capable of $10 million. But if I am, I want it because it's within my capacity to do it and... Once I get it, then, you know, I guess maybe once I get it from there, figure out what the hell am I going to do with it? I obviously don't need that much money. But broke people, if you have huge ambitions, maybe you want $10 million. They're going to make you to be a like like a tyrant or something. Make it seem like you're a tyrant just for wanting a lot, just because they don't want a lot. And people that don't want a lot will try to convince you that you shouldn't want anything either, you know? People take their subjective opinion and try to make it an objective fact inside of someone else's head instead of saying, hey, you know, like, I don't want a million dollars, but who the hell am I to say what you shouldn't want for yourself or your family or your community, right? Um, so Bill Gates, right, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's him, wants to take out the top five diseases in the world. It's probably a good thing that he's rich. It's probably a good thing that he's rich considering his intentions. He wants to wipe out malaria, right? So you need money to do that. You know, everything that you want to do, you know, pretty much it requires money to do it. You know, um, people think money makes you evil. If you're already an evil person, you, that's going to get exposed when you have a lot of money. You just become that much more wretched. Right. But if you're a good person to the core, that only get <clears throat> that only gets amplified with you having more money. If you're a giving person, you being able to give more of course, you'll be able to give more if you have more to be able to give. You know what I mean? But the problem is if you never want money because you think acquiring a lot of it makes you evil, then your your view on money will never allow you to want to even be interested in figuring out how to make lots of it. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I remember, I'll never forget this one interview I saw when a guy said, poor people are selfish. And I was like, wow, that's that's crazy. Like, I've never, you know, I never heard that coming from a rich man, coming from a person who's worth... $350 million. He said, poor people are selfish. The person's like, why do you say that? He said, because if you ask a poor man, why doesn't he want money? It's just I, 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 me, me, me. Like all of his responses are something like, 
I only need this much for my cell phone bill, for my mortgage. I only need this much for my daughter, for my other kid, for them going to school. I only need this much to sustain my life and F everybody else, basically. And he was like, poor people only care about maintaining their 30 by 30 foot square apartment unit. And that's it. That's all they care about. I was like, that shit hit me hard, yo. And then he was like, do you know how good it feels when Puerto Rico gets hit by a disaster? And for me able to rate for me be, to be able to raise money so much money, he gave millions of dollars to them. And he said it wasn't even his money. He did a, f- a fundraiser. He's good at raising money. You know, he said, do you know how good that feels? You know, and then I thought as he was talking, I was thinking about how a lot of a lot of poor people, you know, we have neighbors that are poor, too. Right. And they might come to us for one hundred dollars, two hundred dollars. They have an emergency tire popped, you know, or they, they need a new set of tires, they need a new vehicle. They just need two hundred more dollars to get a new vehicle. Um, What's up, Yocasta? How you doing? And so they, they need two hundred more dollars to get their vehicle. Right. Um, they come to you for $200. They can't get $200 from you because you barely have $200 to give to yourself. And you feel bad because you're like, man, I wish I could give. I wish I could give. I wish I could give. But there's a part of your brain that disempowers you from wanting to be able to get more to give more because you think money's evil. So you'll never be able to give more because you'll never have more because all you care about is sustaining your own life and the 10 people that you give a damn about and let the rest of the world sort itself out. And I realize how selfish am I if I have the capabilities of being a millionaire and I choose not to become that. Because if I have altruistic good intentions, then everybody benefits. You know why I want a lot of money? Because I have a lot of broke ass family members that need it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't need much. For me personally, I don't need much at all. Like, I'm cool with two meals a day, you know, a roof over my head. Preferably, I would like my cell phone bill to be paid, but even if it's not, I can manage and a place to sleep. I don't care. Like hardwood floor, I'll take it. If I have a blanket, that's better. Like I'm adaptable. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm not fancy as I don't need a house. I don't need an apartment. You know, I could live at a friend's house. Like I'm cool with that. A lot of people judge that. They're like, yo, why don't you just get your own shit? And I I hear where they're coming from. Yeah, cool. But it's like, bro, it's cheaper to, you know, like it's cheaper to have eight roommates, nine roommates. You know, like there's a lot of people that don't, they want a lot, but they don't want to do what it takes to get a lot. Right. That's why immigrants come to America and they're killing it because they come here and they live in a one bedroom apartment and it's like 15 of them. And when, when it's 15 people, yo, rent becomes a hundred dollars, rent becomes $70. And then 10 years later, all of them are independent business owners, but they had to come from shit to get to where they want to be, but they did it smart. And the reason they was able to do that, they didn't care about people's opinions. You know why people won't live with nine roommates? It's because that's not a good post on social media to claim that you live with nine people and the rent is split between nine of you. And valuing people so much opinion, opinion so much to the point that you won't do the things that would make success come a lot quicker by leveraging, you know, everyone else's income. You know what I'm saying? Because there's only so much you could do by yourself, you know, but you need a team like Jeff Bezos, one of the richest men, probably the richest man, if I'm not mistaken, in the world right now. He has 6,000 people working for him. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah, as, as, as much of a genius as he is for creating Amazon, he needs a team behind him to get to that level. So it depends on what level you want to get to, how far you want to grow. You know what I'm saying? And I want you to think about something. If you were the reason that 6,000 people have a job, How much money do you think you would make because of that? So you see how much value he's bringing to the marketplace? Amazon, people like rush delivery. They like same day delivery. He provides all the services the customers actually want. And that's worth a lot of money. You know what I'm saying? Um, So if you become the reason that 5,000 people have a job, 10,000 people, let's say you're the reason you create a company that employs a a couple million people. What is that going to say about your value? You know what I'm saying? Like Disney, uh, Walt Disney. You know, um, let's say whoever's above him, because it's always a pyramid scheme. I know some of you throw the pyramid scheme thing around. Everything is a damn pyramid. You know what I'm saying? Even the relationship, when you get married, you and your husband, right? Or you and your wife, the relationship between you and your wife and God, that's a pyramid with God being at the center point, right? And you two being at the bottom two angles of the triangle, you know? And in that pyramid, the more, the closer that 
the two individuals get to God. As you rise up, you get closer to God, but you also get closer to the center point and you meet in the middle and you get closer to each other. You know what I mean? So every damn thing is a pyramid. You know what I'm saying? I think when people say that, what they're actually saying is I don't like recruiting. I don't like getting people convincing them to get into my business. But um, some of the most successful people, they don't do any convincing. They just post their daily results, weekly results. They get tons of results and their results does the recruiting for them. That's what I see these people doing, right? <clears throat> so like if you made a company, if, you, if you're the reason that a company gets paid a million dollars, do you think they would mind paying you $200,000? You know what I'm saying? Like there's other people, right? They're doing consulting for businesses. They're doing stuff like, hey, I can guarantee that, you know, I could, I could do Facebook ads for your company <clears throat> and I, you know, I, I could help you generate $30,000 a month from me running, me taking control of your social media and me managing your Facebook ads, right? If you're the reason that a company makes $30,000 a month, do you, why would they mind paying you $4,000 a month to keep that going? You know, they're almost, they're like, yeah, I'll take that deal. If you could promise me $30,000 a month, I would, I would gladly pay you 4,000. 4,000 is like nothing, even 6,000, maybe, maybe 10,000. If you, if you made me more money, I could, I could cut you a bigger deal. If you bring me a lot more customers, you know what I mean? So that's, that's consulting. People are doing consulting on Facebook, Facebook ads. That's one thing that people could do. Um, selling things on Shopify, right? Amazon, eBay, um, whatever it is that you, I don't know what it is that you might want to do. And you know, what's the crazy thing about life. You might be extra, extraordinarily good at something that you're saying no to today, right? A lot of people are saying, yo, I'm not a salesman. I've never once said that in my life in regards to myself. I've never said what I'm not. I've only said what I don't want to do. I said, I don't want to sell. The reason I didn't want to be a salesman is because I was like, yo, I, I don't like convince I, my perception of what I thought sales was. I thought I had to beg you to see the value in my company. Yo, Steve Jobs is not begging people to buy iPhones. Like I said, a lot of people have the release date memorized and they line up with their thousand dollars ready to buy the phone on release date. Never once had to beg a single soul to see the value and having a overpriced, high, uh, you know, cell phone. But so many people see the value in it and then it becomes valuable. Like what's the difference between a $10,000 speaker and a $100,000 speaker? And it's not $90,000. I know you might think that, well, one, one gets paid $90,000 more. Like, yeah, that, that'd be the obvious difference. But the real difference is the, the person who gets paid $100,000, his perceived value to the marketplace. You know what I mean? When his name gets put on an advertisement that he's going to be speaking at a certain event, you know, he's able to, that one person off of the strength of his brand alone, he's able to ensure so many people sitting down to that event that they don't mind paying him a hundred thousand considering how many, how much revenue they're going to generate from he, him even showing up to that venue. You know, it's the difference between the value of Beyonce and Shmeyonce. You know what I'm saying? Some <laughs> like who the hell knows Shmeyonce? Nobody. You know, that's why she can't sell as many tickets as Beyonce brand, personal brand. Personal brand means nothing besides reputation. How many people know you? How many people like you? How many people, if you throw an event right now, are willing to pay money to come hear you speak? Right. And there's a difference between the perceived value that you have for yourself and the perceived value that the marketplace have has of you. There's a lot of teachers going on strike. Right. They're demanding that they get paid more money. And I'm not arguing that it would be nice if teachers did get paid more money. You know, it would be nice if teachers, pol police officers and firemen got paid more money. But a lot of people have a philosophical ideological point of view that they get they get mad at athletes you're mad at lebron james you're mad at kobe michael jordan and you're mad that these people make significantly more money than teachers who shape the minds of our youth and it's like why are the people who shape the minds of our youth being so underpaid in comparison to people that just bounce a basketball all day here's why is because people live such a miserable life that they spend a lot of their life escaping Forms of escapism, entertainment. A lot of people, when they get off work, they work for eight hours. They entertain themselves for eight hours. Well, not that's unfair to say. They work for eight hours. Um, maybe they hang out with their kids for two hours, right? Um, but they might entertain themselves from for like five hours a day, you know? 
and they might have huge ambitions of wanting a lot of money, but you got to understand you entertaining yourself five hours a day is to, is a detriment to your goals. It stands in a way it's a barrier to everything that you want to achieve. People want to watch cat videos and meme videos all day. You know what I'm saying? Like I only watch mostly at least 90, 85 to 90 percent of the content I watch on YouTube. It's only stuff that's going to make me smarter. All the content that I watch, my goal when I watch a YouTube video is my intention is to is to come out less stupid than I was before I watched that video. That's my intention behind most of the videos that I'm watching on YouTube. I just want to be less stupid than I was before I played the video. That's it. You know, so I'm trying to I want to learn about economics. I want to learn about speech, how to improve speech, even though I'm a, I'm a well, I'm, I'm a good speaker. I'm not good enough. I'm not as good as I can be, you know, and um so, yeah, man. Anyways, I'm getting into a, a lot of different stuff. I want you to know there's different versions of you. There's you who you are today, right? And I pray to God that you don't have a victim mentality, that you're so mad at the world about the injustices that you had to face with because bad things pretty much happen to everybody. And I know that sounds like I'm oversimplifying because some people might be like, well, you don't know what it's like to be kidnapped. You don't know what it's like to be raped or you don't know what it's like to, you know, and then we, we're always trying to get people to sympathize towards our past, you know, living in the past. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot, there's a lot of black people today getting so mad at 400 years ago. And it's like, yo, you have a life today and you could do something about today. And why you complain about things that shouldn't have happened the way that they did, you're neglecting to focus your attention on things that could happen differently. If you learn how to train your mind to focus on things that actually matter to you, you know what I'm saying? Um, playing the victim is not cool, man. Uh, anyone that has a victim mentality, that's going to stand in the way of you being, of you having a lot of money. If a lot of money is your goal, maybe it's not. Um, anyways, so I know a lot of you who want a lot of money. You feel like you can't comfortably say that around religious people because they're going to hear that you want to be a millionaire and they're going to like, you know, they're going to like say, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, why? You know, they're going to make you feel like you're less than for wanting more than they want, because since they don't want a lot, they can't perceive you wanting a lot. Right. So you might keep those aspirations to yourself. I don't think God has a problem with people wanting to be millionaires. I think he has a problem with you loving money more than you love people. You know what I'm saying? You treating people like crap just because you have a lot and they don't or you want a lot and they don't. You know what I'm saying? Like once money becomes your Lord and Savior, that's the issue. You know what I'm saying? Because then it dictates how you treat other people, you know? Um, so yeah, I don't think there's ever anything wrong with wanting a lot of money. Um, but hopefully, you know, anyone who wants a lot, they know, maybe they know what they want to do with it once they get it. For me, like I said, I got tons of bro guys, bro guys, family members, a lot of them. And I know I'm capable of a million dollars. So I would be doing them an injustice if I don't do what I'm capable of doing. Because once I reach my full potential, everybody around me benefits from that. You know what I mean? So the reason I want a million dollars is because why not? Especially if I know I'm capable. I want whatever the hell I'm capable of, right? And isn't it funny that, you know, if I ask you, how good do you want your marriage to be? What do you want from your marriage the most possible? What do you want from your kids? The highest level possible. What do you want, you know, from yourself and being a good person? You want to be the best person you can be for the most part, a lot of people. But when it comes to money, I want just enough to sustain myself. Do you see how like, isn't that twisted? And we've been indoctrinated into believing that having enough to manage yourself is good. And um, you should be satisfied with that because at least you're not some random starving kid in Cambodia or Africa. And then we take people from Africa and we thank God that we're not them and use it as a point of gratitude. I get the point of gratitude. It's a good point to be grateful for that you have more than somebody else. But what does it matter if you have more than somebody else, if you're not living up to what you could be and what you could have? You know what I mean? You might be like, well, I don't want that much, you know? Why do you think it's going to ruin your life? Like people are so like, you know, People in poverty are some of the proudest people I've ever met. They have nothing and they're absolutely content with it and they're good being there or so they tell themselves that they are, but they don't realize how many more people they would benefit. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, so I want to talk about the difference between Jay-Z, right? Or the difference between uh, Eminem and me. What's the difference? <laughs> well, I can't pack an arena the way that he can. Not yet anyways, right? The whole world knows it. Well, not the whole world. Lots of people knows it knows his name. Like <clears throat> he has a video, Kill Shot. It wasn't even a video, it was just a song dissing somebody. 
It made like 203 million views. And it's just a still image. <clears throat> and it came out in September, I think. It came out in September or it might have even been October. Um, how is it that a man could generate 200 million views in less than five months, right? It's because he has most of the world's attention. How did he get that attention? By rapping, right? You know, how did he start rapping? He just, he became obsessed with it. He became so obsessed that he started studying rappers and he turned rap into a study and then he mastered it and he became one of the top p names in the hierarchy of rappers, right? One of the most sought out people when it comes to like, you know, a lot of people give credit to Eminem for the reason that they want to rap or credit to him for the reason that they're inspired to want to do more, be more, you know? I know you would argue that what does his lyrics do for the youth? Doesn't it corrupt people's mind? I get that. But the artistic value that he brings, because <clears throat> like I said, people live a life that they want to escape from. And we escape in different ways. Some escape with cocaine. Some escape with constant masturbation, music, uh, going to events and parties and clubs, right? Like I said, a lot of us, we spend eight hours sleeping, eight hours uh, working, and eight hours entertaining ourselves. And that's the whole day. And then we want more and we wonder why we never get it. And it's because we're not willing to become more. So you, you have to grow in your mind. You know what I mean? You have to you, you have to grow in what you believe is possible. You have to believe that more things are possible um, so that more could be possible for you. You know what I mean? Like, give me a second. Because if you don't believe that too many things are possible, then guess what that means for you? That means to you, too many things are not possible for you specifically. Because it won't be because if you don't believe, then you won't have what it you won't even try to find out what it takes to be all that you can be because you lost before you even began by doubting yourself. Doubt is so poisonous. Doubt stands in the way of so many things. And, you know, sometimes we doubt because it was that doubt was given to us by other people. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to being all that we can be, all of us have had people tell us that we're not shit and we're never going to be shit and we're not in, we're incapable of doing things. You know what I mean? And it becomes your truth if you embrace it as true. And you're like, you know what? Maybe they're right. Maybe I should just get a regular job. Why should you be regular? Especially if you know that you were born to be extraordinary. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you know that, then why should you be regular? I don't think that anybody who was born to be extraordinary and knows that within themselves should choose a life of mediocrity if they know that they have so much waiting, so much more waiting for them if they only embrace their potential. You know what I'm saying? So... Anyways, um, having millions and millions and millions of dollars, nothing wrong with that. I think there's something wrong with having it and hoarding it to yourself, right? And I mean, granted, you, everyone has free will and people have the right to do what the hell they want to do, right? Free will, like, you know, people can hoard it to themselves if they feel like it. But there's so many people around them suffering that could benefit off the money that they just want to throw inside of a swimming pool and, and swim through it, you know? And it's like a lot of people around them could utilize that money. Now, that might not matter to the selfish person that just wants to hoard it to themselves because they don't see the benefits of being giving giving to a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, man, there's just a lot of lessons that I've been learning that there's nothing to gain without giving. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing to gain without giving. Um, you work for a week, right? Let's say you work for five days. Most people get their paychecks uh, Friday, I believe. When, you know, you've given four days and a lot of days, a lot of times, six days, seven days of labor and every seven days you get compensated for it, you know, so there's nothing to gain without some, some jobs, they hold your check for two weeks, something like that, you know, um, so you have to give <laughs> two weeks of free labor basically, and then get compensated for two weeks. Some people get paid biweekly. So as you give your labor, you then receive something for it, you know, even with love, as you give love, you will receive love in return. Um, I know sometimes with the whole love thing, we get mad at people that don't want to love us. But the thing is, you can't control who loves you. You might give so much love to a specific person and realize why are they not reciprocating? A lot of times they just don't feel like it or they just don't they don't feel inclined to feel the same way towards you for whatever reason. Um, don't let that diminish your love because then you're, you'll grow weary in good doing and then your love for people is limited. And then the love you get from people is limited. Right. Because if you don't want to give anything, how are you going to receive anything? There's something that used to bother me as a kid when I was 11 years old, 12 years old. I used to hear this a lot. People said it's better to give than to receive. I'm thinking, why? Why? I don't want to give anything like I don't mind receiving a PlayStation, an Xbox, a Dreamcast, a Nintendo. But why should I give that to anybody? Like, why? What's the point? 
And I realize as you give, you receive, you know what I mean? So getting back to that scripture in the Bible when, where God says, I love you because you loved me first. Oh, no, sorry. I loved you first. And that's why we love God. It's because he loved us first. You know what I'm saying? So um, people want to reciprocate, right? I've, I was listening to Jordan Peterson talk the other day. I might have to plug my phone in. Jordan Peterson was talking about he opened up a Patreon account. Um, or no, actually somebody opened up a Patreon account. It wasn't Jordan Peterson. It was, he was on somebody's podcast. It was H3, H3 on YouTube. And they said that they opened up a Patreon and they were going to close it. They was receiving like somewhere between $1,000 and $3,000 a month. And their viewers liked them so much, brought them so much value that they said, Hey, we want to give you $25, $50, $100. And then they said, Hey guys, thank you for the donations. We actually don't need your donations anymore because we're financially stable and we just feel wrong taking your money because we just, we're not in a position where we need your money anymore. So they were getting ready to close their Patreon account. Their fans actually got mad at that. They said, they was like, yo, don't leave it open. We want to give you money because we feel bad listening to your content so much and not being able to distribute something back in return. So humans naturally want to reciprocate. Not all the time. It's hard to want to reciprocate towards somebody you don't like. You know, I lived with a lot of people that I don't like before. And when I didn't like them, everything that they gave me, I didn't want to give them back. Why? Because I had a personal issue with them in my own mind. You know what I mean? Like, um... And uh, people thought that maybe, uh, they, I don't know if they thought I was entitled or they used to call me ungrateful. And it's like, nah, I have no problem being grateful. I'm just not gr grateful towards you because I despise you. It's hard to be grateful towards a person you just despise. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, I thought it was interesting that they, they, they told their fans, hey, we're going to close a Patreon account. Thank you so much for the donations. We don't need your money. And fans actually got mad. They wanted to reciprocate. You know what I'm saying? So I know that I really believe every person breathing has some type of gift, some type of talent, some something that they would be extremely good at that they could even monetize and make a living off of, whether it be art and something about artists, man. You know, people for some reason don't want artists to thrive. They feel like they sold out once they open up Patreon accounts or once they start taking money from the public. Like it's almost like people want people to be a starving artist. Or, I don't know what's wrong with people, but it's like a lot of people who claim that they know that they they themselves, they would want money. They would want to be compensated for their art, for their music. Um, this happens a lot with Christian music, Christian rap. People say if you're a Christian rapper, you shouldn't put a price tag on your money. I mean, price tag on your money. You shouldn't put a price tag on your songs. And it's like, but why? Why shouldn't I? You know what I'm saying? Like, so I don't know, man. Like, please don't listen to people like that to tell you you shouldn't try to monetize, you know? Um, one person I really like, Gary Vee, he says... All the information he give is free and people tell him, yo, your information is worth thousands of dollars. I don't understand why you don't have a $2,000 mastery course with all of your information. And he says, when you have a message that you want to get out to as many people as possible, you have to make it free because any price tag puts a friction on people receiving that information. And if your goal is to get as many people informed as possible, why would you ever put a price tag on it? On the information. There's a lot of people that delude themselves into thinking that I want to help people like, but then, but it's like, yeah, but buy my $9,000 mastery course. And it's like, do you really want to, if you want to help people, why is it $9,000? You know what I'm saying? Um, and some people would argue, well, not everyone has to buy it. Like if it's $9,000, like obviously it's reserved for the people that are really serious, but it's like, but people are deluded. They don't realize that's, it puts a barrier towards how many people are going to be receiving that information. You know what I'm saying? So it all depends on what your intention are. So you can become more valuable to the marketplace. If you develop your skill, if you if you learn more, if you read more books on whatever subject it is that you want to master, you listen to more podcasts, you watch more videos, um, you know what I mean? You get around people that have the results that you want to have for yourself. They start teaching you directly and indirectly how to do the things that's necessary to get the results that you want. And um, yeah, man, I think that's that's pretty much I think that's all that it takes, you know. Um, and it takes more than, like I said, it takes more than reading about working out because you could read about working out all the, all day, but reading about working out doesn't make you fit if you don't do the push-ups, if you don't do the sit-ups, if you don't run miles a day, you know what I'm saying? To develop the body that you want to have, you know? Um, so, so, you know, like, like I said, somewhere in this podcast, a lot of people want a lot of stuff, but to get what you want, you must first deserve what you want. And a lot of people don't deserve what they want. The reason people don't deserve what they want is because they're not willing to put in the legwork. So 
um, once you're obsessed with your goal, you'll find a way to get there. I mean, some people are obsessed with finding ways to be offended. That's why they always find a way to be offended because they're obsessed with, they train their mind to look for that. And although they would never communicate it to themselves that way, and they would never say that, hey, I'm obsessed with being offended. That's really what they are. And it might be on a deep subconscious level where they themselves don't even realize it. As they scroll through social media, they're looking for shit to be offended by, or they're looking for people to read their statuses and say, this is what's wrong with humanity. This is why I hate this world. And this is why I can't wait to fucking die and get the hell out of here, go to heaven where I'm supposed to be. You know what I'm saying? A lot, a lot of people are saying that. You know how many frustrated Christians, they can't wait for Jesus to come back right now? Not because they want him to come back, but because they're frustrated with this world. And him coming back means they won't be frustrated anymore because there is no frustration in heaven. So it becomes a self, self-seeking, self like, Jesus, come back now so, I could, so you could take away my frustration. Instead of, Jesus, teach me how to navigate through the frustration. Teach me how to not be frustrated constantly because when you were here on earth, you wasn't constantly frustrated. So how can I have the level of peace you had? Because if I have your mind state... I'll share the same victories that you had. You know what I'm saying? So, so much more of a powerful place if you start saying, I wish I was stronger instead of wishing that people would be less mean because people won't cease to be mean just because you think they should. You know what I'm saying? Like the next podcast, I'm going to go pretty soon. I'm going to stay for a couple minutes, but the next podcast, right? To give you a preview of something I want to talk about later. I want to talk about 10 year olds that are killing themselves over Snapchat bullying over uh twitter instagram facebook bullying you know and a lot of us think that the bullying needs to stop you know i think people need to be trained to be mentally fortified to be indestructible to the point where nothing affects you um like negatively on an emotional level you know because the only things that affect you are the things that you believe matter like you know what i'm saying like i don't know what you struggle with i don't know i don't know if you're mentally handicapped i don't know if if maybe you're if you're fat, you know what I'm saying? Or if you're whatever it is that you have, you know what I'm saying? Um, sometimes it might be stupid things that you think shouldn't even be happening. Like maybe you're in a interracial relationship. You're a black person dating a white person and everyone in the restaurant that you're at seems to have a problem with that. You know, you're getting a lot of stares. You're getting a lot of looks. You might think that people should not stare at you or people should not look at you. But instead, what I think is you got to learn how to navigate through that without being torn apart by it. Because whatever people prefer to be doing is what people are going to be doing. I have a friend who sent me a video of pigs, a bunch of pigs being roasted, right? It was a terrible video, like an animal cruelty video. And I I'm, I'm simply told him, yo, there's no behavior that a human being could engage in that surprises me. There's no extent to how evil a person is willing to be. There's also no extent to what goodness could come out of a person if they give their life to God, you know what I'm saying? So I'm not surprised by mean comments, you know what I'm saying? I'm not surprised when people say, you might be like, well, people shouldn't be mean, you know? But it's like, when, if you get into this should and shouldn't all the time, you're gonna be miserable because you're gonna be living inside of what you think shouldn't be and your mind is always in that place instead of being adaptable to what's happening, you know what I'm saying? And then you're gonna try to seek sympathy and empathy from people um, thinking that sympathy and people that understand you enables you somehow to be stronger, you know, um, it's good to have a support team. That's awesome. But you got to understand that are they enabling you to continue being that way? Or are they giving you a pat on the back saying, oh, like, I know that people said mean stuff and you know what I mean? Like, I know that, yeah, you're right. I would have felt the same way because there's so many people that when you get offended and you get on the phone and you talk to your friends and you talk to them about how someone said something that they shouldn't have, they remind you that they would have reacted the same way. And then you talk to 20 other people, 25 other people, and they would have responded the same way. Oh, that person said, what, man, I would have cursed them out. Yeah, you did the right thing by cursing them out. And then another person's like, oh, you just cursed them out. Damn, I would have punched them in the face, man. They deserve more than just to be cursed out. They should have got punched for that. Like, why didn't you fight them? Like, you know, so. So all these people that make you feel justified in being a broken ass person, you know what I mean? And then you continue being broken because the rest of the world makes it permissible to be that way. And we accept it as normal. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's just crazy. Like, you know, so many people that are evil that they convince themselves that they're a good person. I'm sure Hitler thought he was doing the right thing. That's the crazy thing about self-deception. It's the worst form of deception is to deceive yourself that something is what it's not, you know? I know a person who he's had at least 50 people tell him that he's a controlling person, but yet he thinks every person he meets is a twisted person and something's wrong with them. It's like, nah, bro, if enough, if enough people tell me that 
I'm controlling. I got to take a deep look within my own soul and see what the hell is wrong with me. What am I doing? You know what I mean? Like self-awareness, you know, is important, you know. Um, when it comes to kids, bullying, like people are being, you know what I mean? Like some, some 10 year olds, some 15 year olds, they're just experimenting with what it's like to be mean. And there's so many accessible ways to be mean now, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, and all these ways that weren't available before, you know what I mean? But, um, the bullying doesn't stop. You know what I mean? Like just because we think it, we should. So, um, people have to get stronger. Don't, don't wish life was easier. Wish that you were stronger and also know that, um, that you could, I, I believe every person, I believe every person living could be making a hundred, at least a hundred thousand dollars more per year. Every person, I believe that for everybody. I, I'm not saying everybody's going to be a millionaire. I'm not saying that I believe that. I don't know who's capable of that, but I know some people are. Um, don't let broke ass people around you convince you that wanting a million dollars is so much of an evil thing. You know what I'm saying? I don't understand what's so bad about wanting more. Cause like I said, in your relationship, how much do you want from your relationship? As much as possible. You want as much from your job as possible. Like in terms of, um, good structure and people behaving well, like you want the most from your job. You want the most from your wife, your kids. You want the most from yourself. You want the most from God. But when it comes to money, I want just enough to barely survive. That's weird. You know what I'm saying? And we've been indoctrinated into believing that that's okay or that should be okay. And it's okay to, and, and the reason we make it permissible is because at least I'm doing better than some random starving kid in Africa. And at least I'm not that kid. And it's like, yeah, but you're nowhere near your potential. You know what I mean? So when it comes to money, you might be wondering how much money should I want to make? Whatever amount you're capable of making, that's the amount, because I don't know what you're capable of. Some of you listening, you're probably capable of 10 million. You're probably capable of 1 million. You're probably capable of just 150,000. But you'll never know if you don't experiment with things and try things out. And if you spend all your... Oh, last thing I want to end on. I really think the highest paying position in the world is being a salesman. And I think more people are salesmen than we think. Beyonce, she's not a singer. She's a fucking salesman. Jay-Z is a salesman. Jay, you know what I mean? They sell tickets. They sell music. You know, Yes, they're musicians. I get that. But, you know in their marketing or in their, like when they book tour dates and stuff, they're always thinking about how can I maximize the venue? How can I pack as many people into a venue as possible? If I announce tour date right now, how long before the first, you know, date is booked completely? How many hours does it take? You know, um, the difference between a person that if I, if I put out, uh, you know, if I put out a tour date right now, right, I can't get 10,000 people to, uh, book the first, you know what I'm saying? The, within the first two or three days, but other people can. And what makes, what's the difference between me and another man that's able to do that and me not being able to at this moment? Doesn't mean I can't learn how to do that. It just means I don't have that right now. I don't have the publicity necessary to pack 10,000 seats right now. You know what I'm saying? The only difference is someone has a bigger personal brand than I do. You know what I mean? The only difference between you and Oprah is how you spend your time. You start, like I said, some people work eight hours a day sleep eight hours a day and then entertain themselves eight hours a day. And that's why they never learn what it takes to be rich because they don't turn money into a study. They don't, you know, some people never find happiness, not because they're not capable of it. They don't turn happiness into a study. You have to study happy ass people and see what makes them tick and be ready to throw away your philosophies that make you you in exchange for something that can make you better. Because sometimes people cling on to their mediocrity and they claim that as who they're supposed to be or who they are. And you cling so hard to that, that list of what you think is you. But sometimes what you think is you is destructive emotions, always getting offended, always getting annoyed. And you hold on to that and you think God created you to be that way. I know a person who I told him, I said, if you could get rid of anxiety, would you? He said, of course I would, but it's not likely for me. You know, some people are just always going to have it. And guess what? To that person who said that, he's probably always going to have anxiety. Why? Because he embraces that shit as normal. So when you, when you normalize something, it becomes your normal. Even though your destiny and what you're capable of is so much higher than what you've settled for. You know what I'm saying? I don't think people are mediocre because they were created to be that way. I think they chose to be that way. You know what I'm saying? I don't think Hitler, you know, was supposed to like kill 6 million people. I think he could have inspired 6 million people. Could have been a motivational speaker, right? He could have, but he chose to become a monster. You know what I'm saying? It's so yeah man it's all about decisions if if you're weak as hell if everything bothers you if everything annoys you if everything triggers you just know that 
life doesn't have to be like that. You know what I'm saying? There was a time when I was easily triggered too. Thank God that I believed in a potential for myself. It's the only reason people don't bother me now. Because I, one day I said, I started watching this one guy on YouTube. You can write this name down if you want to. His name is Dan Moeller. D-A-N-M-O-H-L-E-R. And he just has a perspective that I believe keeps him whole. He has such a good perspective that if, if he was my friend, I don't know this guy personally, but I would never ask him how he's doing. I know how he's doing. Based on his perspective, his day is always good. I, I could assure that based on the way he thinks. I'll never ask you, hey, bro, how's your day going? I know he's having a, an amazing day because his mentality is so damn powerful. Nothing could get in the way, in the way, uh, in, in the way of how he thinks because nothing has permission to give him high blood pressure. Nothing has permission to get under his skin, to annoy him, to disturb him, to be the reason that he hates society because he loves all people. You know what I mean? Nothing can trigger him because he got rid of his buttons. You know what I mean? Like nothing could get under his skin because he got new skin that other people can't get under. You know what I mean? That's powerful. You know what I mean? Like being, like not being like getting to the point where nothing offends you. That's the ultimate ace in the hole. I wish more people talked about this stuff. It's so important because everybody's so fucking on tilt with po politics and everything and Trump this and politics that and you know what I mean? And yeah, man. So being being emo emotionally triggered, it doesn't put more money in your pocket and it doesn't add more value to anyone's life. It just makes you a mess. And then you're going to hang out with people who agree with you being a mess because they themselves are also a mess and you continue being a mess and you feel like it's well, it's permissible because everyone else is messed up. And then you become a product of your environment instead of being a product of what you were created to be. You know what I'm saying? So anyways, um, please believe in a higher potential whatever it is that you struggle with just know that it doesn't have to be like that and know that there's somebody in this world who overcame what you struggle with whatever it is there's someone that has your same exact circumstances and they became a millionaire regardless of those circumstances there's someone else who was easily triggered just like you are and he overcame that they're not there anymore you know and the reason they're a new person is because their old version of them had to die metaphysically you know metaphorically and you know like spiritually too had to die like if you're always annoyed, it's because you have a mindset that keeps you there. And all that needs to happen is for you to take on a new mindset that doesn't allow things to be permissible anymore that used to be permissible. You know, people that are easily offended, they justify it. You know, every time they get offended, they're like, well, I wouldn't have cursed at you. Or I would have never punched you in the face if you didn't say these set of words, which means that it takes a certain set of words for you to punch, punch someone in the face, which means anybody on this planet can say those set of words and it triggers the devil coming out of you in that specific scenario, because all it takes is for a certain criteria or standard that you have to be violated for anybody to manipulate how you behave. And now you're in prison or what now you're, I don't know. Now you're at somewhere you don't want to be locked up for doing something to a human that you wish you didn't do. If only you knew how to manage your anger, you know, or, or rather get rid of it. I'm telling you as possible. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to be an angry ass person because it doesn't benefit you or your household being that way. It only ends in you arguing with your wife and then your kids being bearing witness to it. And then your kids having the same dysfunctional relationship that they witness you having and they become a product of their messed up environment. You know, I'm telling you that the cycle could, it could stop today. You know what I'm saying? Like right now and just, just as quickly as you could think a new thought, you could feel a new emotion because your emotions are linked to the thoughts that you constantly think of. You know what I'm saying? So if you're always thinking about how you were raped, you know, it's going to, it's going to feel like you got raped. 3,000 times, if you think about it 3,000 times, because do you know that your mind can't tell the difference between something you vividly imagine and something you're actually experiencing? And you might wonder, why do you feel the effects of being offended by a person? They only said something to you offensive one time, but yet you feel the effects 45 times every day for three weeks later. Why is that? Because you keep repeating the memory. And every time you repeat, repeat the memory, you repeat the emotions that follow that were active when the experience was live and and happening in real time, you know what I'm saying? So you just got to change your focus. You got to change. You got to focus on things that are worth your time focusing on, such as those things that you want to accomplish before you die, because you have a limited amount of time to be alive and you don't want to spend all of it being vengeful and being bitter and being mad at the world because no one wants to help you or no one cares about you or no one, you know, like even if that is true, even if no one does care about you, it doesn't mean that you can't 
become the motivational speaker that you know you're capable of or the rapper you know you're capable of being or the artist the painter the fucking whatever it is you want to do and inspire many people who had the same insecurities as you and you could become a beacon of hope for everyone else around you who didn't believe in a higher potential for themselves until you came around you know what i'm saying and that that itself makes life worth living when you find purpose right and you execute on that purpose and then when you live a purpose-filled life it transcends the misery that was you know what i mean and then it's no longer about the misery it's about trying to eliminate as much misery out of other people's life as possible because you become that beacon of hope that they look forward to for inspiration because they know that if you can do it then they could do it too and then you empower people instead of being a disempowered person that changes nothing and, and accomplishes nothing besides complain about circumstances not being ideal. You know what I'm saying? So I hope this helps. I hope it doesn't sound condescending, patronizing, me telling you how to feel, what to feel, why to... F you do you. L listen, like every podcast I do, if anything I'm saying is nonsensical, please don't apply it to your life if it sounds stupid. If you prefer whatever you've been doing, then live life that way. I'm in no way qualified to tell you what to be or how to be. I'm just sharing my experiences and just talking to those that are interested, whoever those people might be, um, and indirectly changing a bunch of people's life. And, um, and anyone who's gotten any value from any of my podcasts, appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And um, yeah, man, whatever you want in life, um, I want to close on this thought. Make it a study. If you want money, study money. If you want happiness, study happiness. You want success, study success. You, you want women, study women. You know what I'm saying? I don't I don't know what you want, but make that a study and become proficient at it. You know what I mean? And then um become the go-to person in that industry where everyone wants to know your feedback about that topic, you know what I mean? Like you know, um I don't know if you want to be a, a a chef, you know, start a YouTube channel, start cooking, start, you know, and yo, another thing, if you want to be famous, engage with everybody, answer every question, answer every comment, answer every you know what I'm saying? Like one thing that really inspires me, I've never heard this before, but you know, Gary Vaynerchuk on a video, he was like, yo, from 2007 to 2011, you know, he had a million followers on Twitter and he answered every single question, every single comment, every single concern, any time anybody ever tweeted at him, he answered back, you know, and you might be like, he used to spend 18 hours a day replying to people. You might ask me, how is that a good use of my time replying to everybody? It's because if you want to build a personal brand, you have to give a, you know, you have to give a damn about the people that support your personal brand. And when you give a damn about them, it gives them more incentive to want to give a damn about you. You know how many people tweeted a celebrity and they got, they started crying because the celebrity tweeted them back because the celebrity actually cared to say something back. And even if they say something negative back to you, you're like, man, someone I care about responded. That'll mean so much more than, you know what I mean? Like, so yeah, man. Um, anyways, so what's the last thing I wanted to say? Um, yeah, so, oh yeah, the story that I was telling. So the reason he did that was because, you know, what's crazy. He only has like 5 million. Well, only, I say only like 5 million people. It's not a lot of people. Uh, Gary has like 5 million, close to 5 million people following him on Instagram. Kanye West has like... I don't know, 50 million. I, I, I don't know what his number is, but it's significantly a lot more. Um, the crazy thing is just because you have 50 million people following you doesn't mean 50 million people give a damn about you. It just so happens that they follow you. Maybe they're being nosy or maybe you're a celebrity and people just want to see what you're up to. But it doesn't mean they support your personal brand. It doesn't mean when you release a sneaker that you're going to get 50 million sales because 50 million people follow you because you might have 50 million people that follow you and only 100,000 that deeply give a damn about you. You know what I'm saying? So the crazy thing about life is, you know, you might have 100,000 people that care about you, even though 50 million are following you. Meanwhile, someone has 5 million followers and they have uh, 600,000 people. They give a damn about them. That's the difference in sales. That's the difference in selling a book. You know what I mean? Um, and that difference is created when you interact more with people. You know what I'm saying? So one day he released a sneaker and there was more people waiting in line for his sneaker than there was on the release of Kanye West sneaker. And you might think that's ridiculous considering someone has 50 million followers. Why wouldn't their sneaker line be longer for the release date? It's because Gary Vaynerchuk 
replies 18 hours a day to people and people don't forget that and then they love you and then you know when they when once people love you other people's love for you can be monetized i know that sounds like crazy some people are gonna think i sound like a demon saying that oh what are you why are you monetizing people's love what i'm saying is like like i said like the person who had a patreon account and they used to receive somewhere between one thousand three thousand dollars a month and then they humbly stated, hey, we don't need your money anymore, but thank you so much for the support. We're going to close down the Patreon account. People actually got mad. Their fan base got mad and they said, keep it up. We want to keep donating. So they kept it up because people don't like receiving without being reciprocal. A lot of times, you know, there, there are certain cases where we don't want to be re reciprocal towards people we hate or don't like. But normal under normal con conditions, when someone really inspires you, you really want to give back in some way, shape or form. And some people almost feel indebted to the person, you know? So that was Gary, Gary Vaynerchuk's um, marketing plan is to guilt trip people into feeling like they have to, what you call it, pay him back without once telling them that. Like he never once tell them, hey, I've given you so much value, therefore you should be doing this for me. Never once says that. He's like, yo, look, I have a sneaker coming out. If I've given you any value and if you feel like buying it, here's where you can buy it. But don't you know, like don't do it if you don't have it. You know what I'm saying? Like my sneakers cost like fifty some dollars or whatever. He'll be like, "Yo, if you don't got it, you don't got it." I understand life is hard. I don't want you spending your last fifty dollars on my sneakers if it doesn't benefit your household for me to. You know, it doesn't benefit your household for you to do that. You do you. But if you feel like you want to buy them, here's the website. You know what I mean? And and he says all the time when he releases books, if you can't afford my book, even though it's only you know my book's only ten dollars, but if you can't afford that. I want you to pirate my book. He says, go pirate it. Go go download it illegally on some website. You know, if that's the only way you could get access to it, because I believe he genuinely cares about whatever information he has access to, getting it out to as many people as possible. Even if that means him losing a sale and someone pirating his book through an illegal website, he encourages that. Why? Because he gives a damn about people getting access to the information. Because it's not about selling a $4,000 mastery course. I think that's awesome. You know what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with a $4,000 mastery course. Everyone has different motives and intentions. But you know what I mean? This just puts a barrier to how many people are going to buy it. Anyways, um, so yeah, man. So you just got to gotta learn more to get more. You got to become more to have more. And everything that you want in life is on a top shelf. And you got to stand on the books that you've read to get to that top shelf. That's how you get the things on a higher shelf. And if you're not a reader... Thank God for audio podcasts and stuff like that. If you're not an audio person, thank God for videos. There's so much, so many ways for you to consume information. Whatever information you want to consume, you don't have to consume it through a book. And thank God for me too, right? Because I hate fucking reading. I don't like reading. You know what I mean? But I, I love the hell out of some damn watching videos and listening to audios. That's my thing. So anyways, um, so yeah, man, please believe in your potential. I believe in you. I don't know if that means anything, but I know that. If, if there's anything inside of you saying that you can do something, don't listen to your pessimistic, ne negative ass family members or relatives or neighbors that say you can't do something that you yourself know you're capable of doing. And if it breaks your heart every time you share what you think you're capable of only to have someone shut you down, maybe it's best you keep your dream to yourself until you execute and manifest your dream into reality and then then talk about your dream once you manifest it. You know what I mean? Some of you won't be able to handle uh, getting shut down by other people's pessimism. And it's only because you value their opinion. If you didn't value their opinion, it wouldn't bother you that people say you're incapable of doing something. Like, I don't give a damn about someone saying that to me because them saying that doesn't change my belief in me knowing that I'm capable. You know what I'm saying? And I, I feel like people have the right to say, think, and feel what they want. That's why when they do say, think, and feel what they want, I'm not devastated. Or how could you say that? Or the audacity of you to say that, the nerve of you, how could you? I'm, I'm never saying that to people. I feel like people could say and express whatever the hell, hell they feel like it, but it doesn't have to impose on me. You know what I'm saying? And my belief system. It's not going to change my belief system. It's not a threat to my belief system. That's why it doesn't bother me that they're saying those things because I know what I'm capable of, even if no one else does. You know what I mean? So if you ever get to that place, the comments won't bother you. If it's hard to get to that place, I'm empathetic and I understand. You know what I'm saying? But just know that you can revolutionize the way you think if you start seeking people that are 
are currently better people than you and they exemplify everything that you want to be and as you study their behavior you have to be willing to kill off parts of yourself you know it might be a painful process to realize that 95 percent of you is completely useless and it needs to be burned in ashes and then you know something needs to emerge from that you know that might be painful to come to that realization to know that 99 percent of you is completely useless but it's an amazing it's amazing once you do burn off 99 percent of you just to have that, you know, um, that part of you replenish with something better than who you was yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So growth is important, you know, because um, like how many years do you want your daughter to be in fourth grade approximately one year? You know what I'm saying? Um, a lot of times we get out of high school and we just don't grow after that or we get a college degree. We don't grow after that. And then we're the same person we was at 25 at 79 you know what I mean? And don't grow at all. A lot of times, you know, and a lot of people die at 25, but they get buried at 65. They're just a walking corpse with no dreams because society and humanity has sucked the life out of their dreams and whatever they used to think was possible. And isn't it crazy that as a five-year-old, you think anything's possible, but as an 18-year-old, you fucking question everything and nothing's possible to you anymore unless it seems realistic. You know what I mean? So much unrealistic shit happening. I mean, you know, if you dig up a man from 500 years ago, like he would think it's super unrealistic to even think that I could take out a smartphone and I'm talking to, I got like 950 friends. I have no idea how many people are listening live. This shit is like witchcraft. Like, you know, he'd be like, yo, what form of sorcery is this that you pull out a smartphone and you reach so many damn people? Like, you know what I mean? Like this shit is not realistic. This damn smartphone that I'm talking you, talking to you through, it's not something quote unquote realistic, but yet it exists. Why? Because a man demanded that it does. So start demanding that things exist in your life and it will. And I'll leave you on that note. See you on the next podcast. Take care.